Welcome to my channel. I'm Gary Wiryawan. And today I want to discuss about the question, is Micro Four Thirds still worth it in 2022? Let's go. As some of you might already know, I really love Micro Four Thirds camera system. I use lots of Micro Four Thirds lenses, I own multiple Micro Four Thirds camera bodies and I use it for all sorts of different things from travel photography and video to everyday kind of stuff as well. However, there's now this question about whether Micro Four Thirds is still worth it, especially today in 2022, where there are lots of competition from different camera manufacturers and also from different camera formats as well. So nowadays, camera manufacturers outside the circle of Micro Four Thirds such as Canon, Nikon, Sony, and Fuji, they are now becoming more aggressive and more competitive with their camera bodies and lenses as well. These manufacturers, Canon, Nikon, Sony, Fuji, and the others, they start to make smaller, lighter camera bodies that are more affordable and still perform really well. And they also make smaller, lighter lenses and also less expensive lenses. So now the competition for Micro Four Thirds, who previously holds the title of the best when it comes to smaller, lighter bodies and lenses, and also not as expensive as the full frame and APS-C uh, formats, now starts to feel the pressure of the competition. Furthermore, I think the development of Micro Four Thirds system as a whole, both the camera bodies and the lenses, is just slow in my opinion. Other camera manufacturers from different formats, they can launch new cameras almost every year and uh, Every time they launch a new camera, uh, most probably it will feature a new sensor, a new technology of some sort, and it's a little bit revolutionary. Uh, while in terms of Micro Four Thirds, all that we had so far is just evolution, nothing really game-changing so far. Also, Micro Four Thirds manufacturers such as Panasonic and OM System, they are too focused with professional uh, camera bodies development, professional lenses development, they don't really focus on the majority of their target market, which is enthusiasts, people who are hobbies, who are enthusiasts about photography and video, but not necessarily a professional who makes money from photography and video. So uh, what ended up happening is that in recent years, uh, the focus is more on bigger, larger, more professional camera bodies that are big and heavy and expensive, but there's not a whole lot of intermediate enthusiast cameras for traveler, for vlogger, for uh, everyday people who just want to take nice pictures, you know, a hobbyist who really enjoys and are really passionate about the hobby of photography and video uh, without being a professional photographer or filmmaker. So now, with all those facts that I previously mentioned, is Micro Four Thirds still worth it in 2022? That's the question. For me personally, the answer is still yes. I will explain to you why Micro Four Thirds is still worth it in 2022. However, my answer will be very subjective and a little bit biased. Not because this video is sponsored. No, this video is not sponsored by anyone. Nobody is paying me to say anything in this video at all. Uh, but it's because I really love Micro Four Thirds camera system. It's the camera system that I really enjoy the most after trying lots of different camera formats. And also it's the one that's really helped me to step up my photography and video game so much. Anyway, here's the answer. I hope that I will be able to stay somewhat objective and make some valid points along the way. So first point, although the camera bodies from other formats besides Micro Four that starts to become smaller and lighter, the lenses are still most of the time larger than Micro Four Thirds. A good example for this is the recently announced Nikon Z30 APS-C camera. It is a small, lightweight, and very capable APS-C camera, and it is smaller than my Micro Four Thirds cameras, my GX8, my G85, the Nikon is smaller. However, the lens, uh, the kit lens that comes with it, 
is a 16 to 50 uh, millimeter f3.5 to 6.3 and that aperture is just too small uh, our kit lens uh, which has the maximum aperture of f5.6 most of the time like the lumix 14 to 42 or the olympus counterpart they are still smaller and they have slightly larger aperture and a very similar focal length also, if you consider the classic micro four thirds lenses, such as this Panasonic Lumix 35 to 100 millimeter f 2.8, which is in full frame equivalent a 70 to 200 millimeter f 2.8, this is much smaller. This is much lighter. It's more easy for me to carry around. It's so lighter and I can just use it for travel. It still packs the f 2.8 aperture in here and it's just more enjoyable to use than the full frame 70 to 200 millimeter f 2.8. Also with some other lenses like the 12 to 35, which is like the 24 to 70 millimeter f 2.8 in full frame terms. This is also so much smaller. If you look here, uh, this is the Olympus 45 millimeter f 1.8. So this is like their 85 or 90 millimeter f 1.8. Look at this. This is so small, so lightweight. This is like nothing in your camera bag. And if you compare it with the 85 millimeter f 1.8, it's so larger and it's just heavier. And you know, it's just a significant difference. And that still makes Micro Four Thirds a good choice for everyday kind of photography and video solution. And also, especially for travel, in my opinion, because the lighter weights, the smaller lenses uh, can help you to reduce weight, especially for uh, international uh, travel using airplane where you have seven kilogram limits on your carry on luggage. All right, that's the first point. Second point, image quality. Although Micro Four Thirds hasn't been developed very quickly and also they're still using uh, largely old sensors from the past, uh, the image quality, especially when compared to smartphone, is still a significant jump. It's still good enough, although not as good as maybe like a full frame cameras or APS-C cameras. They might have better resolution, they might have better dynamic range, they might have better low light performance, but Micro Four Thirds is still a significant uh, image quality jump when compared to even modern day smartphones. No, I'm not gonna lie. If you're using a full frame or an APS-C camera, then you will get better background blur or bokeh. If you're using the same lens as the one in Micro Four Thirds, you will also get better resolution most of the time and also better low light performance and dynamic range as well. But the improvement uh, from Micro Four Thirds is not that significant. It's just a little bit. You know, you can get the same image quality, about 80 to 90% of it using Micro Four Thirds camera instead. And it's still, once again, a significant jump over a smartphone image quality. All right, that's the second point. Now let's move on to the third point. Third point, yes, Micro Four Thirds is still worth it in 2022, especially, especially if you are looking at older camera bodies. These camera bodies might not be the latest and the greatest. It might not have the latest technologies whatsoever, but it is still a great performer. It still has great image quality. And also it is very uh, cheap nowadays. It is very affordable and you get so much features in that price range when you compare it to other cameras from different camera formats. As an example, let's take a look at the old Panasonic Lumix GX85. It's an old camera from about 2016 or something like that. But nowadays, in Indonesia especially, the uh, price for a new GX85 is equivalent to about 499 US dollars, which is not that expensive, but the camera already packs some great features such as in-body image stabilizer, and it also has a good 16 megapixel uh, image sensor. Although it's not new, it's an old sensor, it still has a pretty good performance when you compare it to other cameras nowadays. And also it's just a nice small camera that has a really good performance and just uh, you know, very enjoyable to use. And when you compare it at that price range, uh, there's not a whole lot of competition that can do that in different camera formats. 
Also, my Panasonic G85 that's currently recording this video right now. It is also an old camera and can be found very affordable uh, in a lot of, you know, online stores and marketplace and whatnot. And it is also a great camera as well. It's really a good deal when you look at it because it already has in-body stabilizer like the GX85, but it's also weather sealed and the video capabilities are really good and the image quality is also good. And I'm really enjoying this camera. This is such a great value at a lower price. And when you look at the competition from other formats, uh, they cannot really do this at this price range. Plus, most of the old camera bodies for Micro Four Thirds, they are mostly smaller, they are mostly lighter when compared to the newer ones, so they're much better for everyday kind of stuff and also for travel. So yeah, that's the third point. Now let's move on to the fourth and the last point, but not the least. Fourth point. Micro Four Thirds is still worth it in 2022, especially when you take a look at their older lenses. Take a look at this guy right here. This is my Panasonic Lumix 12 to 35 mm f2.8, one of my favorite lenses. This is an equivalent to 24 to 70 mm f2.8 for full frame cameras, but this is much smaller, this is much lighter, and much more or less expensive. This can be had at about 500 US dollars or 600 US dollars, they are not that expensive and they just pack the same image quality, the same sharpness, the optical performance is just great, the autofocus is just great and you know, uh, at that price range, uh, it is still very, very interesting and very, very attractive. Take a look at this guy right here. This is the Olympus 45mm f1.8. This is also an old lens from back in the days when Micro Photos started. And it's just so tiny, it's so small, but the image quality, mm, very sharp, very, very, very pleasing to look at. The bokeh is nice. I just really love this guy. Also, take a look at this. This is the old Panasonic. 14 to 140 millimeter f3.5 to f5.6. This is the first version, not the latest one with the weather ceiling, but this still performs really great. The sharpness, uh, considering that this is an ultra zoom lens, this is still more than good enough, <laughs> in my opinion. I took it to Iceland with me and take so many photos and video using uh, this lens and it's been performing really great. Take a look at this little guy right here. This is the Olympus 9 to 18 millimeter wide angle lens and it's just so tiny. This is as small as a kit lens for micro photos and it's an ultra wide angle lens and it's very flexible and not that expensive as well. I found this one used for about 399 or 499 US dollar equivalent and it's been performing really great. The point is, the older lenses, they are, they are mostly small, they are mostly lightweight and affordable. Nowadays, because they have the newer version, then uh, the price drops significantly and you can find them really cheap, even new ones. Still speaking about lenses, when you take a look at the whole ecosystem of Micro Four Thirds, they have the most lenses of all mirrorless camera formats. They have all sorts of wide angle lenses. They have all sorts of telephoto lenses. You can have multiple brands even making the same focal lengths as well from Panasonic, Olympus, OM system, and the third party brands such as Laowa, Sigma, they also make lenses for micro photos as well. So if you need the most complete uh, lens system uh, of all camera formats, I really think micro photos is still the king in terms of lenses. So yeah, those are all the four points of why I think Micro Four Thirds is still worth it even today in 2022. And that concludes today's video. So that is all for today's video. I hope that you've been enjoying this video and please let me know in the comments down below. Do you think Micro Four Thirds is still worth it in 2022 or no? Please let me know in the comments down below and let's have a little bit of conversation going on. Also, if you have any other questions, let me know in the comments down below and I will try to answer them as well. Also, don't forget to support my small channel by liking this video, sharing this video and subscribing to my channel down below. It will help me to motivate me to keep making these videos for you. Thank you and goodbye.